This workflow video highlights and expands on your existing protocol. To get the most out of this tutorial, have your protocol at hand. The first step in this protocol is sample, reagent, and instrument preparation using the Automate Express nucleic acid extraction system. Then, assay setup with the ResDNA-Seq Residual DNA Quantitation Kit. Then, real-time PCR using the Applied Biosystems 7500 Fast Real-Time PCR System. And finally, analyze results with AccuSeq Real-Time PCR Software. Start with sample, reagent, and instrument preparation. If precipitate forms in compartments 1 or 2, lysis buffer and magnetic particle suspension, heat the cartridge in an incubator at 37 degrees for 30 minutes, or until the precipitate is no longer visible. Heat only those cartridges that you plan to use that day. Remove up to 13 cartridges from the kit box and vortex the reagents to resuspend the magnetic particles in each cartridge. Hold the cartridge foil side up on a vortexer set to maximum speed, then pulse approximately 3 seconds, 2 to 3 times. Repeat this step with the cartridge foil side down, then repeat again with the cartridge on its side. Visually confirm that the magnetic particles are resuspended. If not, repeat vortexing. Hold the cartridge foil side up, then tap the cartridge on the counter several times to deposit any particles or liquid droplets into the bottom of the compartments. After resuspending the magnetic particles, use the cartridges within two hours or perform this step again before using. When inserting the cartridges, make sure that the notches in the cartridge align with the notches in the cartridge rack. After loading and inserting the cartridge rack and tip and tube rack, prepare samples in triplicate using screw cap tubes. Place 250 microliters of sample in each sample tube, up to 13 sample tubes in total. For samples that are less than 225 microliters, add PBS to the samples to bring the total volume up to 225 microliters. In samples expected to have very low levels of DNA, the addition of glycogen and tRNA may improve recovery by preventing residual DNA from being absorbed by surfaces during processing. Cap the tubes and vortex. Then briefly spin to collect the samples to the bottom of the sample tube. Remove the screw caps and load the sample tubes into row S, fourth row of the tip and tube rack. In row T2, third row, load Automate Express system tips inserted into tip holders. Leave row T1, second row, empty. Row E, first row, load with labeled PrepSeq kit elution tubes with the caps open and secured, as shown here. Open the card slot and insert the PrepSeq Express kit protocol card in the slot with the arrow pointing toward the instrument and the card label facing left, then close the card slot. Do not remove or insert the protocol card while the instrument is on. Removing the card stops the run, and it may cause instrument data file loss. If you accidentally remove the protocol card during a run, power off the instrument immediately to minimize potential for instrument data file loss. Load the cartridge rack into the instrument first, followed by the tip and tube rack. Changing the order of loading the racks may cause the instrument to stop during a run. If you are processing fewer than 13 samples, make sure to load the tips and tubes in the same positions as the reagent cartridges that are loaded in the cartridge rack. Close the instrument door and press Enter. The system will then walk you through the protocol setup. Press 1 to select the PrepSeq 123 option for mycoplasma, MMV, or vesivirus. Press 2 to select the PrepSeq option for residual DNA. Select the lysis time. Select the elution volume. Then review your selections and press Start. The screen shows the steps and the appropriate runtime remaining. At the end of the run, 
the instrument beeps briefly and the digital display shows additional options. Select an option, then open the instrument door. Remove and cap the elution tubes containing the purified nucleic acid. If you ran the waste pooler protocol, the guanidine thiocyanate wastes are collected in tube 11 and the alcohol-based wastes are collected in tube 12, leaving the rest of the cartridge empty and easy to dispose. The waste pooler provides a green solution for disposal of liquid waste generated from an automated express run. The waste pooler separates the hazardous waste from the non-hazardous waste and consolidates it, thereby enabling a safer and easier way to dispose the spent reagents. If you run the waste pooler, close the instrument door, then press Start or press Escape to skip the waste pooler and return to the main menu. The next step in this protocol is residual DNA quantitation. To run the ResDNA Seq Residual DNA Kit, begin by preparing serial dilutions and standard curve using the following method. Store the DNA dilution tubes at 4 degrees for use on the day of preparation. Otherwise, store the tubes at minus 20 degrees and use within one week. First, determine the number of controls and test samples to quantify. Then, thaw all kit reagents completely at room temperature. Prepare a qPCR reaction mix according to the table in your protocol. Prepare the extraction recovery control according to the protocol. Then add the qPCR reaction mix to the test and standard curve sample. First, set up a 96-well PCR reaction plate using this example plate layout. Adjust this layout according to the number of test samples to be run. Seal the plate with an optical film. Ensure a tight and even seal between all wells and along all edges to minimize the risk of cross-contamination. Then quick spin with a centrifuge rotor that is compatible with 96 well plates. Real-time PCR is performed in the Applied Biosystems 7500 Fast Real-Time PCR System. To begin the run, select Experiment Type, Quantitation, Standard Curve. Select Reagents, Tacman Reagents, and Ramp Speed, Standard. Set up plate file according to how samples are loaded in your plate. Set the reaction volume per well to 30 microliters. Load the plate into the instrument and click Start Run. A residual DNA run is approximately 1.5 hours. The final step in this protocol is Analyze Results. In the AccuSeq software, select the following, Analysis Settings. In the Analysis Settings window, deselect Automatic Threshold. In the Threshold field, enter 0.2. Baseline may be run in automatic or manual mode, whichever mode best suits your data. Evaluate first with Auto Baseline by selecting Automatic Baseline. Review the data and analyze the flag summary. Verify the values for the slope, intercept, R-squared, and efficiency. To export the database, select File Export. In the Export Data menu, Select File Type XLS. Click Start Export. If you find that the RN and CT values are inconsistent with replicates, it may be there has been evaporation of reaction mixture from some of the wells because the optical adhesive cover was not correctly sealed to the reaction plate. If you find there are no defined amplification plots, it may be because an incorrect detector was selected on the amplification plot, or an incorrect detector was applied to the reactions when setting up the plate document. For additional tips and tricks, refer to your protocol. For more information as well as detailed protocols, visit thermofisher.com forward slash resdnaseq.